Is the scraping of data from publicly available websites an intrusion of the privacy of the people who share their information on those sites, or is it legitimate data mining? In the U.S., a court has weighed in, and we have the answer coming up on For Immediate Release. Another fine podcast from the FIR Podcast Network. This is For Immediate Release, the podcast for communicators. everybody, and welcome to episode number 247 of For Immediate Release. Uh, my name is Shell Holtz. And mine is Neville Hobson. Good news for archivists, academics, researchers, and journalists, because scraping publicly accessible data is now legal according to a U.S. appeals court ruling. This was the outcome of an appeal launched by LinkedIn, who, as you can imagine, are not too happy with this. So this is a landmark ruling by the uh, U.S. Ninth Circuit of Appeals, the latest in a long-running legal battle brought by LinkedIn aimed at stopping a rival company from web scraping personal information from users' public profiles. Uh, This is the intro to a pretty uh, useful post from TechCrunch that explains exactly what this thing's all about. Uh, This uh, uh, appeals court reaffirmed its original decision and found that scraping data that is publicly accessible on the Internet is not a violation of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, or CFAA, which governs what constitutes computer hacking under U.S. law. So TechCrunch goes into quite a bit of the technical details surrounding the uh, original case and the appeal. Uh, and also mentions something I found interesting, Shell, because we've talked about this before, probably a decade ago in the early days when scraping content from websites was a truly egregious act done by scammers and other low low life actors who would take your content and surround it with ads uh, uh, and benefit from the clicks it would get. So TechCrunch references that. There have been egregious cases of web scraping that have sparked privacy and security concerns. They talk about facial recognition startup Clearview AI that claims to have scraped billions of social media profiles, prompting several tech giants to file lawsuits against the startup. Several companies, including Facebook, Instagram, Parler, Venmo and Clubhouse, have all had users' data scraped over the years. But this case, originally brought by LinkedIn against Hick Labs, I think I'm pronouncing it right, H-I-Q, a company that uses public data to analyze employee attrition, LinkedIn said Hick's mass web scraping of LinkedIn's user profiles was against its terms of service, amounted to hacking, and was therefore a violation of the CFAA. LinkedIn first lost the case against Hick in 2019 after the Ninth Circuit found that the CFAA does not bar anyone from scraping data that's publicly accessible. That's the key part of this, really. It's publicly accessible. Uh, LinkedIn uh, commented at length about their disappointment in the court's decision, concluding uh, the the obvious line. On LinkedIn, our members trust us with their information, which is why we prohibit unauthorized scraping on our platform. So legally, um, it's legal if you are scraping publicly accessible data. And I think that's the key part here. Not sure whether that means it's okay, though. Legally, it is. Uh, is there a moral dimension to this, I wonder? What's, what's your view on it, Sean? I have uh, mixed views on this. First, just to clarify, the CFAA is the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act uh, here in the U.S. Uh, and, of course, this is a U.S. ruling. I am troubled by the idea that this would be a blanket rule that would apply to, for example, the scraping of blog posts so that you could publish them surrounded by ads without giving credit uh, to the person who wrote it. That happened to me, by the way. I found a couple of my posts uh, that had been put on these sites uh, without credit, without a link to the original source material. Uh, So people were making money off of my work. Uh, And I object to that. And that's more than just illegal scraping. That's more or less a copyright violation. As for data, though, publicly available data, it doesn't seem to me that that's 
wrong. Uh, if it's out there on the web and it is publicly available, I don't see why you can't make use of, of that data. And if you're smart enough to have a bot that can go, I mean, this is what Google does. They send bots around that scrape data so that we're able to search uh, on their search engine. Uh, so, you know, this company that provides reports on employee attrition, getting that data off of publicly available pages on LinkedIn, that does not bother me very much. And, you know, LinkedIn did make the point that they had technical barriers in place that this company was able to circumvent. Uh, and yeah, good on them for being able to circumvent that and get this data and, and put it to good use. This is what we talk about with big data, publicly available data sources that you're able to go in and mine that data in order to tell stories. And this company's telling stories about employee attrition to paying clients. I, I am untroubled by this. I do not have a problem with this. I don't see it any different than the the law that says that people don't have an expectation of privacy when they're out in public. If I take a a picture at a ballpark and post it on my website and you're sitting in the stands and you're in my picture, you can't sue me because I published your picture. You could sue me if I used it to sell a product because that's a different law. That's a different thing. But I'm, I'm just I, I'm fine with being able to go in and avail yourself of the publicly available data that's out there in order to mine that data for useful purposes. Yeah, the uh, it's interesting, the, the, the distinction, I think, um, between publicly available. Um, so the, the appeal court, uh, reading TechCrunch's piece, they uh, report on the fact they used, they were using a gate up, gate down analogy uh, that said, uh, referencing a Supreme Court, U.S. Supreme Court ruling on the matter previously, said that when a computer or website's gates are up and therefore information is publicly accessible, no authorization is required. That's the legal view. Uh, LinkedIn themselves talk about um, when your data is taken without permission and used in ways you haven't agreed to, that's not okay, they say. But... Uh, and of course, LinkedIn is a walled garden. You have to log in to uh, to 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 access content. Yet, uh, you and I are similar. We have a publicly available information about our profiles that are simply available. If you Google, if you Google your name or my name, you'll find in the in the first set of results there'll be a LinkedIn profile. So if you click on the link, you'll go to the publicly available version of your profile in which in the settings of LinkedIn, you determine what information is going to be public available. Arguably, hey, and I'm not a lawyer here, by the way, just to mention this, that, <laughs> that does that therefore imply that you have given your permission by that act? And I think that's the issue that, that people need to understand. If people don't like the idea of this, uh, I, I get it. Uh, I think the notion of your content just being used by someone, you have no idea who they are, what they're doing with it in ways that you might not like, yet it's publicly available. This is different to what was going on a decade or more ago, actually about 15 years ago. I was looking through my blog and I wrote about this notion of web scraping back in 2006 and again a year or two later and then again in about 2010, 2011, um, where uh, uh, at that time these were outright scammers, I mean literally scrapers of the lowest order who would take your content uh, uh, change all your links to, to stuff that they were trying to sell uh, and surround it with, with dubious advertising and make no, no acknowledgement to you whatsoever. So, you know, we have Creative Commons that you and I have been participating in since it first appeared on the scene back in the early early 20s, early 2000s, I mean. Uh, and so that gives permission under, under clear uh, uh, circumstances under which people can use your content without seeking further permission from you. So... Things are not that different, I don't believe. And indeed, this legal ruling, to my mind, like you, I don't have any issue with it, as long as you understand what the definition uh, in this context means of publicly available information. That's the bit I'm wondering whether LinkedIn understands, because they think this is terrible. Yet, it's the whole thing is about publicly available. So they again, they, their statement, when your data is taken without permission, use the ways you haven't agreed to, that's not okay. But have you given your permission by the fact that you've, you've, you've told LinkedIn, yes, you can expose this, this, and this, and this in my profile in the publicly accessible URL? 
Again, that's one for the lawyers to figure out, I would say. But yeah, I, I, you know, I think you've tacitly given your permission, right. even if you may not Looks be aware way. of it. it may, it's not explicit. Uh, I never checked a box that no, said it's OK no. to have this permission of uh, this, this information up here publicly. Uh, but the fact that it is public, I, mean, I think anybody who gives it any thought is going to realize that that can be used. Um, Hick, the company that's using this, isn't using, say, my profile information <clears throat> in order to uh, expose anything about me. They're aggregating data and providing information about employees leaving organizations, uh, probably in terms of percentages. Uh, and, and I just don't have an issue with that at all. I think that's what data journalism and data mining and big data are all about. And if that data resides on LinkedIn, on publicly available pages, so be it. Yep. I, I think there's, a, there's a, a point to be made about using it responsibly and uh, not in ways that uh, would provoke a, a negative response to it. But the reality is that uh, you you largely decide what information about yourself you make publicly available on a social network. Facebook's a great example of this too. Twitter too, for that matter. Uh, even in that short profile, um, it depends on what you what you want to share. But you have to actively make that decision by choosing that, and giving them in a sense, giving them permission to make that information publicly available. So you pointed out at the beginning. You're right. This is a U.S. legal ruling. This may not apply anywhere else. Uh, indeed, here in the UK, I'm not sure whether it will uh, either. There would have to be a ruling locally. And there is one of the issues with this kind of thing where you're looking at probably having to, to make explicit rulings in every single legal jurisdiction. What a headache that would be. But for now, uh, <laughs> the biggest market for all these things is the US, and this is the current ruling. But LinkedIn's going to fight on. Oh, they can fight on, but as far as I'm concerned, if you don't want your data to be used by somebody, then you need to be off the grid. Uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, if if you have information about yourself that's available publicly, there's nothing stopping people to e e go out and and use that information. You know, pull it off of the web and and compile it with all of the data they have found for whatever it is that they're. You know, doing research about and, and take advantage of that. Uh, you don't want to be included in that? Be off the grid. Ah, and that will be a 30 for this episode of For Immediate Release. <laughs> <laughs>